I believe in prevention of disease and hygiene care more than I do in giving or prescribing medicine. And my constant aim is to teach these two things. Plenty of fresh air and sunshine. That is nature's medicine. To have a hospital back in that time and to have our own doctor to run it and her being one of us, I'm sorry it was a short life, but um, look what she was able to accomplish. She built a hospital on our reservation long before Indian health was even thought of. And those were her principles, you know, fresh air and sunshine. And so to sit on this porch, you know, a lot of good memories coming back to me right now. <laughs> In 1913, in the little town of Walt Hill in Northeast Nebraska, the first Native American doctor built a hospital. Without government support, on donated land, with money she raised herself. Susan LaFleche Picot had learned over a lifetime that if she wanted to help her people, she couldn't depend on anyone else. I was just a girl when I went to comfort a woman who was very ill. A messenger went for the agency doctor, but he never showed up. The woman died in agony that morning. It was only an Indian, and it did not matter. It was a death that changed her life and drove her to accomplish the seemingly impossible. She was just being true to her Omaha culture. Our name Omaha means to go against the current. We traveled against the wind very often and traveled upriver. We tend to keep to our traditions and try to hang on to those. But at the same time, we are changing. Susan LaFleche was born in a buckskin teepee just two months after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln in 1865. When a child is born, the parents give the child a name four days after birth, and the child is introduced to the four directions and to the Creator. But the Omaha world was changing. Unlike her older sister, Bright Eyes, Susan was never given an Indian name. Their father, chief of the tribe, wanted his youngest daughter to go far in the white man's world. The son of a French trader and Indian mother, Joseph LaFleche, known as Iron Eye, had been to Washington, had seen the coming flood of white men. He knew the old way of life would not last. Turtles and fish live in there. And th no sharks. No sharks, not in here. Uh -huh. no. Lisa Drum walks with her granddaughter at Big Elk Park on the Omaha Reservation. Not far from here is the site of the old Presbyterian Mission School, built to educate and Christianize the children of the Omaha tribe. That was probably the first schooling that our Indian kids had, and it was close to home, but, but miles away, you know, a lifetime away. So it was a sad time for our kids, but, you know, we had to change. There wasn't, there wasn't anything to do but change. Joseph LaFleche sent all his children to the mission school, including his daughter, Bright Eyes, destined to become a crusader for Native rights and his son, Francis, who would grow up to become a famous ethnologist. I learned most of what I know about that through reading Francis LaFleche's memoir called The Middle Five. And this is Francis's memoir of, of being a child and going to that mission school. He's part of this LaFleche family. He's part of this um, group of people who believe that we need to adapt in some way to the white world to get on and to survive. And yet, boy, that book is really hard to read. 
the cruelty he documents in there of the teacher to the little boys and little girls at the school. Ten years after her brother, Susan went to the mission school. I can't say as I learned very much, she remembered. For sometimes, the teacher used to put a newspaper over his head, calmly lean back in his seat, and repose in placid slumber. She became a devout Christian and learned English quickly, which pleased her father. I think that he knew that intellectually, the Omaha could survive and compete and overcome. If only we had that education that would allow us to do that. In 1879, when she was just 14, Susan LaFleche and her older sister Marguerite stepped on a train and went east to the Elizabeth School for Young Ladies in New Jersey. Their father told them not to look back. My dear young daughters, do you always want to be simply called those Indians? Or do you want to go to school and be somebody in the world? Susan would go farther than anyone could imagine. 